say uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I say we get to start off with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody could stand, please. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And uh, Tony, thank you for uh, putting that up, the flag. No problem. Are you putting the agenda up to, uh, there we go. <laughs> Every <Has> time. <laughs> has everybody had an opportunity to look over the uh, manifest in minutes? Well, we'll start with the manifest. I'll make a motion to approve the accounts payable manifest of March 7th, 2021 and the payroll manifest of March 8th, 2021. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? I've been Bartlett. Hi, Donna Danis. Hi, Tony Dumas. Hi, Tyler Eaton. Hi, John Morn. Okay. Has everybody had an opportunity to look at the, the minutes? I got through most of it. It looked fine to me. I didn't have any issues. Right. Where I was not part of that meeting, uh, I won't vote on it. I make make the, approve the, minutes. Approve the, the minutes is written for 2-22-2021. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye, Donna Davis. Aye, Tony Dumas. Aye, Tyler Eaton. All right, John Moore. One abstention, Ben Bartlett. Okay, so there's nothing on budget, nothing on CIP. Uh, anything on planning? Uh, I didn't make the planning board uh, last week. I was away. I'm sorry, Tyler. I, I don't know if it's my uh, audio or, or what. I, I could barely hear what you were saying. I'm sorry. I, I didn't didn't make the planning board last uh, the last meeting. I was away. Okay. Work. All right. So I guess that. Uh, what about three hundred? Three hundred. Still working on it. We haven't had another meeting. I don't believe Steve have we since the last one. <laughs> still still working on uh, uh, their advertisement book. Okay. And uh, Donna Marston? Yeah, so Marston Fundraising Committee um, keeps working away, doing a fantastic, fantastic job. Um, and we're going to talk later in the agenda about an agreement or a memo of understanding between N NYA and the town to handle um, donations and funds coming in. And, and Donna, I just want to say real quick, too, I did speak to Carl Eden last week. So awesome. Been moving forward with doing something with them. Yeah, so I mean, the point there is that um, the committee is not just um, pursuing sponsorships and, um, you know, grassroots funding, but also uh, donations in kind. Um, so a lot of really good things happening. I'm really excited about it. So well, yeah, Donna, I know this was brought up a couple of times in the past. Um, have has have the committee or, or folks working on the Marston project thought of a name change yeah i mean ben that's one that has come up yeah. um you know and and you know i post on facebook looking for suggestions and um we haven't gotten any real anything really i mean i, I think what it comes down to is it's probably ultimately at the end of the day the decision of this board um you think maybe you think maybe when things actually start rolling and things are starting to be put up maybe there'll be more interest in changing the name then I think if we're going to do it, we're going to do it now. Okay. Um, and I'm wide open to what folks on the board have to say. I don't. Okay. I don't think there's any negative connotation with sticking with Marston. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think if we're going to do it, we should do it fairly quickly, because the committee is out selling sponsor sponsorships. Fair enough. So I don't know. What do you, What do you guys think? Um. I was going to say, we'll probably want to stick with our with a theme that's consistent with the history of the town, mm, yes. you know, like Revolutionary War type, you know, like you know Minuteman Fields or something, you know, 
um, just something that reflects the history of the town. But I, off the top of my head, I don't have any good names. I would have to chew on that one for a while. Yeah, that's um, one thing we discussed, Tony, was was being able to use the four generals' names as the different names for fields, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is good, or different parts of the the park. But we haven't come up with what that Uber or overall um, name would be. Yeah. I like Tony's idea, the uh, Minuteman, but I mean, mean, that's not bad. Yeah, because that's the the guy on the in the in the town seal is one of the you know you know a Minuteman, so you know local uh, town militia type. So, um, so do we want to just think about this for a little bit longer, and maybe by by what next meeting or the meeting after, maybe have something concrete? I think that's good. I think if we can give some thought to it, maybe kick around some suggestions between now and then our next meeting, I think that would be good. Because I, like I said, I think if we're going to um, do that, we need to do it. We need to start using that. that yeah. Right? yeah. Now, we all feel, so we feel all comfortable just naming it ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we can certainly solicit public input which we have tried in the past and haven't gotten much of anything, but yes, ultimately the decision comes to this board. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. No, you, you control town property. You can, yep. you can do what you wish. And the board that comes after you can undo it if they choose. So yeah. now with that said, if, Walgreens or Walmart or somebody like that wants to put a lot of money up to help fund various aspects of it. I'm happy to call it Walmart Fields. <laughs> if we come up with a list of suitable names, would you want to do something like, you know, have the school kids vote on it as well, long as they neat. do it within a certain time frame so we don't stretch it out too long? You know, let the kids who will, will get the most benefit from it decide the naming convention or, you know, decide on the name. Personally, I think we could uh, gather input and then this board decide. Yeah. That would be my preferred approach. Yeah. Okay. All right. John, you've been trying to say something. I thought. I don't have anything. Okay. Nothing else on Marston? Nope. Nope. Okay. Chris, town administrative report. Uh, you may have seen on your ride home tonight the orange weight limit signs went up, started going up today. I don't know if they finished. Um, that goes back to your decision last fall to put weight limits or allow the public works director to put weight limits on seasonally. Um, he was, he was originally aiming to do it in the middle of last week, but uh, put it off until today to line up with a number of other towns so that we're all going up at the same time to um, make it easier for all the businesses that are going to have to deal with it um, and uh, just get a, a consistent message out there. Uh, if anyone uh, needs to travel the roads in a, in a bigger truck, has a, maybe a special delivery or something, they can contact the public works director, Sean McLean, for a waiver. Um, uh, didn't get much chatter about it today. It's, it's obviously a new thing for us. It'll become old hat, um, but just in time, if you look at the weather, it's going to get muddy uh, in 48 hours probably. Um, uh, we're going to be in the 60s later this this week, I think. So um, just in the nick of time. Um, the international dump truck that is hopefully going to be replaced uh, is going to limp across the finish line this year, uh, this winter season. Uh, we're nervous about it to, to get through the beginning of next winter. Uh, as, as I think we talked about a couple times, uh, with the delayed town meeting, if, if we do get authorization to purchase that new truck, uh, we may not get it in time for the beginning of plow season. So, uh, we are, uh, nervously, uh, hoping that we can get that international, uh, through the end of this season and, and not use it much this summer and, and get a few weeks or a couple of months out of it to start next winter. Um, but she is definitely limping across the finish line. Um, quick note of congratulations to Nate Eaton. Nate's a longtime patrol officer, 
uh, in the police department, uh, has recently been pr promoted to senior patrolman and taken on a, uh, some new supervisory responsibilities. Um, and just one uh, public note, the board's gonna talk in non-public session tonight about the Route 4 properties that have been listed for sale. We can say that um, things are active out there. There has been interest in uh, the two, uh, well, it's four parcels, one on three on one side of the road, the old USA Springs property, and then one smaller one on the uh, south side of Route 4, uh, both getting some interest. So um, we, we can't talk about what that interest is, but um, there, there is happening there. There are people touring the property, the realtors are getting calls. Uh, so it's active. Um, and I think that's it for now. Hey, Chris, can you refresh my memory in regards to those signs? They go, they go up and then they're taken down during the mud season. Is that the plan? Yeah, they'll be up and, until weather um, stabilizes. Um, you know, we don't, we don't know, how, we don't know right now how long they'll be up. Um, okay. I think in, in most places it's, it's probably like a, I think about a four to six weeks kind of time frame. Okay. No, I was just a little confused because I didn't see anything underneath the signs indicating timeline or something. So I, I figured where it was orange, it was up temporarily. It is. Yep. Uh, and it, it is intentionally not end dated because um, we'll let, we'll let weather right. uh, and okay. road conditions dictate when they come down. Okay. And they, and they may, there may be roads that, that they come down sooner than others. Um, you know, I, ideally we, we do them all together. Uh, but if we have a real bad trouble spot or something, uh, he, he may need to stretch it out, but it's, it can get confusing for the users. If you're, you know, if the whole town isn't done at the same time. So, yeah, fair enough. um, yeah, and there, like I said, there is a waiver process. It's, um, we'll be pretty forgiving about it in this, this first go around if people got caught somehow, or, um, you know, we'll, we'll work with, with folks, but, uh, you know, when it when it gets like this, there really is a lot of opportunity to to muck things up on the on the gravel roads in particular. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, action items from last meeting, town meeting prep. Was there any more discussion? That's on our general business tonight. So yep, assessing. <clears throat> we have a couple of abatements and cut or excavation. Have any had an opportunity to look those over? Uh, yeah, I, I looked over the timber cuts. I mean, it's boilerplate, you know, it's normal, normal stuff that we typically vote on. So I can make a motion on those if you want. Uh, okay. We'll make a motion to select board approve the uh, report or, of cut or excavation for map 14, lot four and map 44, lot 12. I'll second. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. All in favor? I, Ben Bartlett. I, Donna Davis. I, Tony Dumas. I, Tyler Eaton. I, John Morin. Okay. Did, how about the abatements? Is there any backstory we need to know? Have we seen these before or are these brand new ones? Chris? Uh, you first got them. 10, 10 days ago or so. Uh, I don't believe there's any anything history-wise that isn't in the package. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but you 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 first saw these 10 days ago or so. What's everybody's thought here? Or do you want to pull them up and reveal them there, Tony? Yep. I'm refreshing myself quickly, but I'll have, I'm ready to go on these when you guys are. This is the first one. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Quick. It's or do we would just want to deal with this first one first? Yep. Okay. Do you need me to scroll down or? There's like 20 pages to this, so. Sorry, what's the lot on that? Uh, map 19, lot 10, it's on Shebig Road. Okay, so the, the rest of this is just attachments. The the older tax the tax cards and so on and so on. John, what's your thought? I agree with what Jonathan said. So I don't think any of them are getting over assessed. <laughs> John, do you want to make a motion? Uh, sure. Let me get I can't read on the screen, so. Well, before you do that, can I just make a quick comment? I mean, uh, uh, I, I understand the importance of reassessing and all that stuff, but it couldn't have come at the worst possible time where we're in an economic downturn and taxes are going up and, and all that. I, I'm just concerned about, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, rightly so people are concerned about the evaluation of their house and, and what have you. I don't, I don't want to see people start losing their homes because of, uh, um, you know, because the taxes are, are, are putting them out of their homes. Um, but I'm having a, a tough time re, uh, agreeing with some of these. But John, you've got the most experience in assessing, so I, I would have to defer to you. You know, I, I just don't see where people come, you know, I probably spend more time than I should, you know, looking at people's properties and, you know, and stuff like this around. And, you know, I always have the feeling if, if you put this house on the market today for what the assessed value is, it sells, it's going to be gone. So then the assessment can't be wrong. Okay. And that's how I mean. Assessed values are based on the real estate and how the market's going. You know, when the market tanked in 2008, all the assessments went down. But when it was rolling in 2002, 2003, they all went up. And same thing happened before. Same thing's yeah. happening now. Everything's gone up because everything's, you know, being paid for more. So I don't see where the, these assessments are that far off to make it a reasonable you know, to make any adjustments because I think they're fair as, as they sit. They're not done by mistake or unfair by any means, so. I just think it's, it's, it's I understand the importance of it. I just think it's poor timing right now as far as uh, uh, how things fell with uh, the evaluation and the, uh, the economy. Um, yeah, we just can't change it though. That's what happened five years yeah. there. I understand. I do too. I feel with you, Ben. Okay. Uh, so I'm sorry, John, you were going to make a motion. Yeah, we make a motion on. Um, it's map sorry. 19, lot 10. Yeah, I got to get to that back screen. Sorry, I was, I was looking at the other screen. You see my mouse up here? At the yeah. top. You get the agenda back up again. Sorry. Yeah, map 19, lot 10. There you go. So it, it did look like John was recommending a, a minor adjustment of 6,400 to the value of the property, but nothing else. 
So if we're going to go along with that minor adjustment, we'd be approving this, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm just basically what I meant. I'm agreeing with what Avatar has said on their on their or what Jonathan said on his. Yeah. So I mean, it's not to it's not to exactly what the homeowner wants, but it is a minor adjustment. I can't see for some reason. <clears throat> Are you right. How are we proceeding with this? I'd recommend that your your motion either state a an assessed value for the property or that you approve an abatement for the sixty four hundred as recommended. I'll make a motion that we approve an abatement um, for map nineteen lot uh, ten as recommended to be processed at sixty four hundred dollars. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye, Donna Danis. Oops, sorry, Don. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Don. I'm sorry. Uh, apologies. You should have gone first. Uh, I've been Barlett. Aye, Donna Danis. Aye, Tony Dumas. Aye, Tyler Eaton. Aye, John Morin. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Now, the other one is this. Uh, can you read that okay? Anybody? You a little? Yeah. So this is map 38, lot 28 on Macrillus Road. What's the, uh, uh, without mentioning the, the names or anything, what's the history on, on, on this property? It's on a slab, right? Do you want me to find the tax card? Yeah, it's on there, right? Uh, let's see. It's bound to be in here somewhere. That's the bill. That's like a real estate report. Oh, it's a manufactured home too. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't think it has a uh, a seller. It says crawl space unfinished, slab unfinished. Okay, okay. That answers the question. Thank you, Tony. Boy, those are yeah, comparison properties, but. Um... Yeah, crawl space unfinished. What's everyone's thought on this one? And the noise you hear in the background, I apologize. It's my African gray bird that seems to go through her evening repertoire of noises. So my apologies if you hear that. I'm making, I'm ready to make a motion if others are ready. Yeah. I'm good with this recommendation. I recommend that we deny the abatement request for map 38, lot 28. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? I'm voting nay. Aye, Donna Danis. Aye, Tony Dumas. Aye, Tyler Eaton. Aye, John Moore. And just note that I'm voting no. Nay. Opposed. Opposed. Sorry. Long day. Okay. That, that wraps that up, correct? General business, town meeting prep. The 
only thing to do tonight, I guess, is get your uh, thoughts on the voter guide and then ask a couple questions about that. We don't have anything else ready on uh, facility for the deliberative session or anything. Uh, I believe the school staff's meeting tomorrow to uh, talk through some preparations for that. Um, so you have a, I don't know, 10 page or so voter guide that I've suggested. Um, uh, I've got some feedback on it, uh, but want to know if you want to go forward with something like this or if you want to change anything. I think it's and, pretty straightforward. And then the uh, the other open questions are, do you want to say anything about uh, the articles that, that you, you've put, you put our articles uh, four through 18 there on the warrant and then petitions put articles 19, 20, and 21 on the, on the warrant. If you want to speak to those in any way uh, you can, but I didn't put any words in your mouth on that, on those three. So those are the questions for you tonight. 19 through what? 21. Okay, yep, yeah, these are the petition. Um, so on these, I mean, I'm just, we'd have to be very careful about how we explain these because we don't want to, I don't think we want to steer people or be, you know, be, perceived as steering people on this, you know, any of these really. Um, although, you know, this, um, you know, this one, I don't know that it's actually legal or not, um, but you know, whatever. And this, uh, this thing for redistricting, you know, that again, uh, it, um, we don't want to be, you know, right or wrong. I mean, we, we don't want to be seen as steering people one way or the other on it. You know what I mean? This, okay, that's just a standard finished article. So I'm not sure. I, I'm just not sure what we would say or could say. You know what I mean? Well, I think we need to be consistent. I think we need to, if, if we were going to do it, we'd have to do it on all of them. All, all three of them? Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. Article 19 is very similar to articles that, that have been petitioned in the last couple of years and the board has proposed amendments to, to those articles. Um, you can still do that at deliberative session if you choose to do so. You can speak to that here if you choose to do so. Anybody have thoughts on that? Tony? Um, I, mean, I, I mean, we should probably say, like we say every other year, that we're going to you know, we're going to, we intend to, to modify the, or to amend the, um, the article to make sure that they're up to standards before they're accepted as we typically do with these. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, you know, the, the voters need to decide this. I just want to be careful as not to steer anybody, you know. You saying we should continue with what we did last year and try to amend it? Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, we can we can try to amend it at the deliberative session. Okay. But like here, we can say that, you know, the, you know, the board expects to amend this, you know, in such and such way. I don't I don't know the right way to explain that. Um. How how broad do you think, Chris? Would we go? In saying anything like this, 
just keep it short and sweet and say, you know, the board, you know, the, the board expects to uh, amend this article. Uh, well, you're, you're advocating essentially uh, explaining your thinking uh, in all of the previous articles. You're, you're explaining, uh, you know, what it is you're asking the voters for and, and touching on why not, you know, it's not a, this is not a heavy sales pitch yeah. document. Uh, but you are, you are stating your reasons for asking for these things. You, you can state your reasons for, you know, anything on, on these petition articles, you can speak to them in, in the same manner if you wish. Yeah. Um, or you know, we don't can, have to excuse me or we don't have to say anything at all correct i mean play devil's advocate one of the differences that i see is that in the others we're explaining the vote that we took at a meeting and why we voted in that particular way whereas we're not voting on these so we're not explaining a vote Yeah, it's true. I mean, we never, we never discussed these, which is weird because, like, in the past, when I brought, you know, before I was on the board and I brought forth a, a petition warrant article, I, you know, I came before the board to explain it and try to get support for it, and that that didn't happen with with any of these. We have a uh, question in the chat room there. The, um, all right, so are we just going to leave it? Or are we going to just put that blanket statement out there that uh, Tony, you had mentioned in regards to uh, what we plan to amend it at the uh, deliberative session? I don't think we should put it that way because I'm not going to agree with you guys on amending it. So it's not a unanimous decision of the board. Doesn't have to be unanimous, though. Okay, well, I'm just saying. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with that because at least the the previous ones have the vote indication. Yeah. Right. And you know, I know in the past, I don't know. I think two years ago that there was a. I, I don't even remember what it was, but um, the vote was three to two or something like that and people really wanted to understand why there was a uh, dissent among the board on it but I, I i agree john i don't think that you can make i don't think you can make that statement on the behalf of the board if the board's not in agreement if the board was voting that would be different and you could say you know, X number of board members voted this way because X voted the other way because. But again, I think they all have to be treated equally. Okay. But just my opinion. Tyler? I don't know. It, it's a citizen's uh, petition, right? I mean, they, they're the ones that are putting it in. They didn't ask us to vote on it. Right. They want the people in town to vote on it. Right. I'm with you, Tyler. I understand. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I feel the same way. We'll leave it alone. Uh, I, I think at this time we'd leave it alone. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have our opportunity to make our statements and amendments and whatnot at deliberative sessions. So I don't think it gains anything to add add our commentary here. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, and the petitioners, I mean, they they can market their position as as strongly or weekly as they decide it's up to them it's their it's their warrant article um 
No, I'd, I'd be okay with leaving it alone for yeah. now. Um, what about 20? You had said something about the legality of it. Yeah, I've asked, like, I've asked counsel for an answer on that. And I don't, I don't have it back yet, but I'll, okay. I will get you an answer on that. Okay. It, it may just be advisory. I don't know if the town meeting has that authority or not. Okay. And then this last one is really just voter preference. You know, do they want us to, you know, join in with other towns and asking the state legislature to um, use an independent body to do the redistricting? So, you know, and I think that really matters as to what the individual voter wants. Uh, right. So. so less so the board. Right. I mean, I think, you know, we could all agree personally that, that any redistricting should be fair and independent, but, you know, I don't, I don't think we should steer anybody on this either. You know, let, let people make up their own minds. You know, sometimes you, you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink one way or the other. So say again, that's my uh, favorite phrase to use. Yeah. Forced to water. Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, if I'm, I'm sensing, you know, we'll just leave this one alone too. I mean, I, I don't know if it's a case just real quick here, looking up some stuff on uh, citizens uh, warrant petition warrant articles. I mean, in some, in some States or whatever, they could call for hearings, uh, things like that. So I, I don't know, I guess wait for Chris to get the legal yeah. advice on if, if everything here is, you know, good to go. Or was there hearings on some of that? I, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd say let's just leave these three alone and, you know, stay consistent and not, you know, let the petitioners make their case and if no, thank you. you know if we need to you know explore it further we can do it at deliberative fair enough okay everybody else is, I assume will agree with that yeah uh -huh. what else here that was it 22 is the, the you know the, the any other business article so that's the end Right. So, so Chris, first off, thank you for putting this together. I think it's really important. Um, how, how are we going to make this uh, available? I mean, I, I assume that it's going to be on the website, I'm sure. But is there anything else we need to do to kind of spread this thinking further um, for people who aren't on the website? Because this is new, right, for us. Yes, you, you have not done, some, some, done something like this before. Um, I, I Presumably, we'd have copies at, uh, available at uh, the deliberative session itself for people that walk in the door. Uh, anything other than that ahead of time, we hadn't considered. If you want to print it and make it available in other places, we can do that. Um, then other electronic means to spread it around. I, yeah. Like a downloadable version? Yep. Yeah. Um, is the library open at all? Yes. Because that could be one place where we could put a pile. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm in favor of trying to make this widely accessible, assuming people aren't going to go to the deliberative session, right? And, and yeah. trying to get this rationale out to as many people as possible. Uh, you you could conceivably be um, be amending it after deliberative session as well. You know, you, you may either uh, have something amended uh, and change any one of these, or you may learn that we have missed something in educating people so through that process. So we, we can change the you know, document. You mean yes? Yeah, yeah. We 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 could be. Um, modifying it after deliberative session, we have you know we'll have six weeks or so. Yeah. Uh, so 
you know, we'll, we'll make it look a little different if we need to change it, but uh, yeah. Yeah. At the same time, we wouldn't want to print thousands of them before deliberative. Sure. sure. Probably too much uh, expense and not enough time if we were to do a mass mailing though, right? It would be a challenging bulk mailing. We could redesign it and do it some way. Um, that would be a little more expensive than we had envisioned. Uh, but we can explore it if you want to. If you, if you want to yeah, do that. Someone also just mentioned the forum too. So, um, I mean, my concern is yes. It, it's you know what it it's a necessary document. It's important. But if we just post it on the website, how often do people go to the website? Right. Who's right. going to see it and what, what impact is it going to have? Um, it is a long document to Chris's point. So doing a mailer could be very expensive. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, but. So just make it available wherever we have the town report as well then. Hey Chris, could we do a postcard mailing that drives people to the website to understand or to, to learn or read or whatever? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and we could we could uh, you know reinforce the time and place and all that stuff yep. uh, as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd feel better about that because at least we're telling people where to go for the information. Because I mean, who goes to the town website? They don't. They post questions on the Facebook about what time the recycling center is open. <laughs> yeah. We actually do get a bump around town. We've historically gotten a bump in traffic around town meeting yeah. uh, on the website. So, the, you know, back in the town meeting days, uh, uh, people would, uh, you know, particularly when there were hot issues, uh, people would seek out information there, um, but not, not of the scale that. I know you're, you're you know that industry better than than we do. It's 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 not that impressive. It's just a noticeable bump. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it's actually not, it's twofold benefit. And one is to let people know that they can learn about, uh, you know, go to the town website to learn more about the rationale behind them. But Chris, to your point as well, another opportunity to reinforce the dates and locations. Are you guys all good with that if Chris pursues that? I thought it was hard. Yeah, I like it. Very good idea, Donna. Yep. What's the expense like on that kind of thing? Is it short money? It's in the hundreds, it's not the thousands. Money. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's it's not it's like reasonable. Gonna, you know, it's not like we're going to do a four color card. Yeah. 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 I'll, All right. I'll uh, I'll work up some uh, options on that and. Uh, Look at the calendar. I, we've got time. Yep. Any more discussion on this? Nope. Okay. Facilities reopening. Could that okay. actually happen? <laughs> well, slowly. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I wrote to you and gave you a memo from Courtney that that uh, that both both touch on reopening, particularly at the community center, um, with regional numbers fading and uh, local numbers coming way down. We we're back under five cases in town, active cases right now, according to the state. Uh, we, from a public health perspective, feel like we're in about the same place we were last fall uh, and are thinking of just returning our our operations at the town facilities back to where we were last fall, um, allowing some community group use. Uh, we've, we've got some demand for that. Uh, people want to get back in the building, uh, particularly the group activities, uh, martial arts and um, uh, Steve's probably itching to play pickleball. Um, <laughs> So we we're we're heading towards uh, if with your with your blessing we're going to head back uh, toward those uh, kind of operations masking and uh, and distancing still in place. Um, we keep the town clerk on an appointment basis because that's where the heaviest traffic is. 
uh, and we want to spread the traffic out still. But um, all the other offices, we've we've been in the office during our posted hours for months now. I, I'm back to last summer, I think we've been on a pretty routine groove with uh, having our staff in the office. Um, and we really have not had a need for appointment based services. Uh, we just aren't that busy. Um, uh, you know, some people do call and make appointments, but we're also we've also been able to handle all the walk in traffic without really uh, having people too close together. So um, uh, we don't we don't need to run on an appointment basis with the traffic that we're seeing right now. Uh, and, um, I don't know, it feels like we're headed back toward, you know, our old lives here, just as we are everywhere else. Um, did so I just any, need, did go you ahead. Get any, um, uh, way in from the emergency management director on that? Uh, health, 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 uh, inspectors fine. Uh, Dale's looked it over and, um, he's comfortable with where we are. Um, you know, we, we're going to obviously keep an eye on things and things yeah. change will change, but, um, uh, yeah, you know, every, everybody's comfortable with it. We've all kind of drifted toward, you know, operating that way informally anyway. Uh, but, um, uh, other, other than the, you know, letting groups back in. Looks good to me. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. If, if you're ready to take that step, I'm, I'm fine with it. So what do you think that means? So, yeah, so I, so I support, I support Courtney, um, definitely in, in the plan. What do you guys think that means for us and us meeting in person again? Are we ready to, to think about that yet? I say if the facility's open, we're ready to go back and hold meetings like we used to. Yeah. And we can set up the, uh, I mean, if we want to do the, like the Zoom simulcast in addition to the television, we, we can. Um, but then we'd have to have somebody sit there at the laptop and, and jockey the meeting. We could just, you know, resume or just resort to uh, the, the TV broadcast piece, you know? Yeah. Like we normally do. Yeah, I mean, we were having some challenges with that even before all of this, so we might want to talk through that, Tony, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we can, we can go back to meeting in person and still, you know, be, you know, distant enough around the table that yeah. uh, I'm comfortable with doing it. So do you want to put a tentative date? We start this in April? Or do you want to start this next meeting? Whatever you guys are comfortable with. We were we were headed to uh, for everything else. Uh, you know the rec, uh, the rec piece. Uh, I, we're looking at the end of this month. We we want to make sure that the um, the rec staff have an opportunity to meet with those groups and and go through protocols and cleaning and that kind of stuff. So we won't be um, public for those groups until late March. Hey, I have a suggestion here um, because this is such a, you know, it's kind of a personal issue to everyone. Um, I'm going to suggest that everybody that we talk around that same time frame. So we're 15th, 20, no, we're the 8th, 22nd, and then the 5th would yeah. be the meetings. Yeah. I'm going to suggest that everybody reach out to Chris and let them know. Um, let him know when you're comfortable doing it. Because I think even if there's one member of the board who wants to hold off, we should hold off. I'm comfortable doing it, but if there's anybody on the board who's not, I don't want them to feel pressured into doing it. Yeah, no, you're right. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. No more. Uh, how about uh, how about rental of the of the buildings for private functions? You want to you want to go that far yet, or you want to hold off on that? Uh, we don't have a huge business in that, but it is a little bit different animal where we don't have the level of uh, oversight that we would with everything else. Most of them relatively small, right, Chris? 
That's yes. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Does the board feel putting a number, capping it to the number of people at a time, or just just let it be and let it open, or or should we hold off and just keep it closed for now until we feel more comfortable allowing people to rent? Well, if everything goes right, by the end of April, most people will, if they want the vaccine, will have it. Right. So, I mean, if you want to start it up, rent it out May 1st, people got to plan ahead and do all that stuff, right? No one's going to say, I want to rent it tomorrow. So we could open it up for rentals come May 1st. I'd be comfortable with that. Does everybody feel that that's a reasonable time frame is May 1st? I mean, you don't have any demand time. right now, do you, Chris? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Well, barring somebody's immediate need, yeah, I think May 1st would be a, a good, you know, like an opening date for that kind of usage. Okay. Well, we, we can, uh, I'll, I'll run that by uh, Courtney and just make sure she doesn't have something I'm not aware of. Um, but that, uh, that lead time makes sense. Okay, I'm good with that. Any other discussions on reopening? I think it's fine. All right. Special event licensing. Okay, this one's really riveting. Um, so you talked two weeks ago about uh, the draft that I'd given you on a policy for licensing and the, um, the message I got from you was that it was too much and you wanted to regulate less and uh, be less intrusive at where we could. Um, so I've given you a couple options of ways to do that. I think that we can still protect ourselves uh, with the biggest events. Um, they are uh, option two and option three, I've labeled them. Uh, the, the, the distinction that we that I used here was just the size of the event. Um, that's not the only way we could do it, but it is kind of a logical way to treat different events differently. You know, obviously a, a small event has much less chance of impacting neighbors and roads and town facilities than big ones do. Um, so uh, a couple different options based on um, attendance. One is to have the staff license those very small events with under 100 people. Uh, and the other is to just not require uh, licenses for those small events. Um, there are probably other ways we can, we can carve this up, but those were the two simple ways that we, I thought we could uh, cut back on red tape uh, and delay and still protect ourselves with those largest events. So. Those are two options, and I can keep coming back with more if, if neither of those interest you. And our, our safety chiefs and health inspector and every, everybody who's seen these, they're fine with these as well. So the planning board's meeting tomorrow night to talk about the water cross thing. So how does this, for what they ever decide or what they talk about, how does this spell you're going to, I'm going to attend that meeting on Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if more if Tyler's there and I'm there. Can another board member show up or is that going to be a meeting? That's a quorum. Right. No, three, three, three of you is a quorum. I, I didn't know that. So again, yeah. just so you guys know that I will be at that meeting. So, um, but with this year, how does that affect what they're going to be discussing? So this would go hand in hand with whatever the planning board does with that particular site. Um, the planning board's been asked to allow that activity, that use on that property, um, even though it's not zoned that way. Um, the planning board can grant that uh, or deny it or can grant it with conditions. Um, and those conditions can run, you know, they can run the gamut of all kinds of different things. Um, they, some of those conditions, if they, if the planning board goes in that direction, um, probably would look a lot like what you're looking at right now. I, I, I don't know. Um, but um, in, in the future, 
uh, if if that use is approved on that site, uh, the people putting on that event are still going to have to get a license from you, even though they have the permission to use the land that way. They need your permission to hold the event because it's a competition for money. That's what triggers this one. So maybe belt and suspenders for this particular one, uh, but so be it. Does that answer your question, John? Yeah, for the most part. <clears throat> what happens in a situation where like we may, we grant a license, but then the planning board says, no, you can't do that for X, Y, Z reason. But what happens then? Uh, well, generally the, the, the planning board, the, the land, the use of the land in that way comes first. If it's, if it's allowed or if it is not, um, what you did with the snowmobile event last year, since it was new and kind of out of the blue, you granted a license for it, um, knowing that the planning board would be weighing in on it, uh, before it happened again. Um, if the planning board does not approve that use uh, and, and you know that that use is just straight up denied for that parcel then um presumably you wouldn't you wouldn't allow it again it's you know you you, you need to have permission to use the land in that way um so in the case of that particular event the planning board's got to approve it there are you know other activities and other pieces of land where the events like this could be permitted um, already and the planning board wouldn't get involved. Okay. So, I mean, it, it seems to me that it would be more effective than to have, you know, a staff level process for the licenses because they're going to be more in touch with land use requirements in, you know, in different areas of town than, you know, than the five of us sitting around the table here. Yeah, I agree with that, Tony. Because I, I wouldn't know what the land use requirements are, you know, from one neighborhood to the next in town, but, you know, the town staff could, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, in the back office there, you know, planning zoning office, they probably know that right off the top of their head. You know what I mean? So the only thing I would want <clears throat> is I would, I would want um, some kind of an update of, you know, a license being granted by the, by the town uh, staff. Or you know, a summary the, or something. Yeah, oh, just yeah. for, formalize the notification of the board. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't be able to say no to it anyways, would we? No, I just want to know that it's been approved. That, you know, so that when somebody calls me and says, hey, why are these 78 people doing this, you know, that I know that it's happened. That's all. I just want to, I just want to understand. And I mean, it can, it can, it, it can happen through this meeting. I mean, I don't, care how it happens i just want to know of it yeah i'd agree with that okay yeah i don't, I don't expect a whole lot of activity in that smallest well i don't expect a whole lot of activity in any of these uh but um you know, we we don't know that even anybody has a I, I know a competition event with less than a hundred people in town. These they may not exist for all, for all we know. We're we're really responding to the event that was proposed last year, and we just had nothing to work with. So yep. this this could all be just on a shelf for years, for all we know. All right, so uh, option two with uh, with that revision, you want to see uh, one more look at this? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. yep. I like option two with a summary. Okay. 
Uh, if you don't have anything else on this, I don't need any more on that subject. I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm good. We're good. Ah, uh, NYA agreement. Donnie, did, did you want to talk to that, or Chris, or? Go ahead, Chris, you can talk to it if you want. Uh, okay, the, um, so this, uh, this document has been kicking around for years. Uh, when we started thinking about raising money for Marston, we, we talked with NYA. Um, the, the motivation for this agreement is, are, are really two things. First is to um, kind of formalize, again, uh, the relationship between the town and the NYA and the NYA's use of the fields um, and uh, to uh, just, just put on paper what, what is in practice around how we schedule the use of the fields, who does what to maintain the fields. Um, it's worked really well. Um, you know, NYA uh, is a, obviously a very, very long-standing organization, very stable, um, committed. It's been working on, on our fields for years, put a lot into it. Um, so, um, you know, we're from a town staff point of view, we're very comfortable with that relationship and, and that arrangement. It, it seems to work pretty well. Um, and they do a good job of, of getting as many kids on the field as they can. They, they do a better job of it than we could. So um, we're, we're just kind of formalizing that. And secondly, uh, opening the door for Marston fundraising that we can't do as a town government. Uh, and that is to have a, a tax deductible vehicle for donations. And the NYA has, um, has uh, granted our request to, to serve in that role. They are a, a designated 501c3. Uh, there's, you know, a, a clear uh, path for them to um, accept donations and, and use those donations for athletic fields, uh, which in this case would be the Marston fields. Um, and we wanted to do that in a way that um, made sure that the town was kind of protected. And if, if people are going to be out raising money on, on behalf of a, a town property or a town related project that we had some uh some oversight of that and some uh, control of it so that's that's the other objective of this document is just trying to put some parameters around that um we're, we're not not really nervous about anything we just want to be clear about it from the beginning before any any money starts changing hands um we've gone back and forth a couple times with the uh nya on some of the language here uh, they're comfortable with where we are and um, as you heard Donna say earlier, there's 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 activity happening, so we want to we want to make sure there's a place to um, put those checks when they when they start rolling in. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. And um, I don't know, Donna, you want to add anything else? Uh, yeah, the only thing I'll add to that is that you know the two members of the NYA board are part of our fundraising committee as well. And they are working, you know, hard and collaboratively to help raise funds for the property. Um, so this is a, a really, really good collaborative experience between the town and the NYA. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm thankful for that. I'd like to make the motion the select board authorizes the town administrator to enter into a uh, memorandum of understanding with the Nottingham Youth Association regarding the Marston property and the use of the athletic fields. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye Ben Bartlett. Aye Donna Danis. Aye Tony Dumas. Aye Tyler Eaton. Aye John Warren. Excellent. All right. Anything we wanna review for next meeting? Well, uh, just what we talked about was for the naming and if people are going to have um, thoughts and ideas about naming for the fields, right. it would be great. So I would say that's an action item. Good call, Donna. Okay. I wanted to ask too, I mean, on our state representatives and our, and our senator, 
do they report to uh, I shouldn't say report or do they give updates to uh, the town regularly, Chris, or on what ongoings up in Concord or no? No, uh, we do. We get a we get a written update from Executive Councilor Gatsis on a regular basis. Um, that's more. Uh, you know, executive council isn't, isn't worried about, uh, the bills that are pending in the legislature. So, um, I, I'm happy to forward that to you if you ever want to see it. Um, no, that's a, that's but we do not, about. we don't hear anything. Uh, I have not heard anything from a rep or a Senator in years. And, and yeah. Election day. Maybe yeah. when they um, make the news. <laughs> Tyler. When they're running, they come yeah. and meet with us and ask for our support and swear up and down that they're going to be back talking to us on a regular basis. And then they get elected and we never see them again. The, uh, <laughs> the, the NH NHMA does a really good job of keeping us up to date on the current legislation. You know, they're in the thick of it right now. So, um, you can you can subscribe to that if you haven't already. Their their legislative update is very comprehensive. Um, it's it's a it's almost too much. Um, but uh, you know if, you, if there's something in particular you're watching, they're they're really good about that. Um, that's really our primary source of uh, uh, information about what's in the pipeline. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, discussions? Are we ready to go in non-public? Do you want to uh, reach out to the audience before we go in? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Thank you, Tony. Uh, anybody in the audience have any questions, comments? Watching for raised hands in the, in the audience. So. I guess this will be one of the good things when we go back in person. You can actually see the raised hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No takers. All right. Well, so when we just for the audience benefit, when we go into non public here in a couple of minutes, I'll be putting everybody that's not going to be addressing the board back in the waiting room so you can and then we'll we'll get back in the public session to close the meeting so you can hang out if you want in the waiting room um but there likely won't be any i don't think there's going to be any more business conducted after we come out of non-public so that's just so you know and i just have a, a general statement to make prior to going to non-public um as everybody knows, we'll be discussing the, uh, the, the properties on uh, Route 4, uh, particularly the uh, Route 4 property and, and the property just south of that, that location. I will be recusing myself from any conversations pertaining to the property south of the Route 4 property. Um, so I, I will not be uh, taking part in any discussions on that particular property. Chris, let me know, too, when we if we're about to delve into that so that I can, you know, I can put Ben into the waiting room or whatever. Yeah, it should be obvious. Yeah, yeah. But then bring him back in afterwards. Or we can finish with it. You know, we can make that last uh, yeah. if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good with that. Well, yeah, but doesn't Ben have to be there to close the meeting? No, you, you, have a, you still have a quorum. So oh, you okay. can... That's true. Okay. We got John. So, all right. What's our what's our letters for non-public? D D Delta D. Okay, I'll make a motion. The select board enter non-public session for RSA ninety one A colon three section two D. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Ben Bartlett. Aye. Don Davis. Aye. Tony Dumas. Aye. Tyler Eaton. Aye. John Moore. Thank you, Nottingham. <laughs>